What do you think, So, welcome to another Light and Salt learning video from GED Math. Today we're going to be talking about the multiplication algorithm. So, once again, I'm not trying to confuse you with these big long words. Algorithm just means a step-by-step -step process. So, the question we're asking ourselves is how do you multiply? Okay, so I do want to remember, I want to hearken back a little bit to addition and subtraction because I want to point out to you a fundamental difference between the way we add and subtract and the way that we multiply. When we added and subtracted, we said that it was really important that you line up the numbers because because the same kind of numbers add with the same kind of numbers. So ones can only ever add with ones. Four and two is six. And fives can only ever, I mean, I'm sorry, fives. This is not the fives column, guys. Hello. This is the tens column. Tens can only add with tens. So five and three tens makes eight tens. And hundreds can only add with hundreds. So 600s and 800s make 1400s. So basically my answer there is 1,486. Okay, so one of the big issues that people have is that addition and subtraction is done a little differently than multiplication. If I wanted to multiply two numbers, I'm gonna start with something a little smaller. Even though it looks the same at first, we appear to be lining things up. Right here at the ones column, we started back here on the right. I do want you to understand that in multiplication, um, I'm not lining it up this way because the ones are gonna add with the ones. In fact, multiplication passes out. Now I've joked before that addition is like the army. Everybody lines up and they, they only add with their certain kind of person. Well, I always joke around that multiplication is a very hippy-dippy free love because it passes out and everybody multiplies with everybody. So basically, this number five, he's not only gonna multiply here, he's gonna end up multiplying with everybody, but we are gonna basically pass him out starting at the right. So two times five is 10. Once again, like in addition, I'll drop down the zero. I'll bring up the one. But now I'm gonna pass this five out again. He's gonna get passed out here to the three, the number in the tens column. And five times three is 15. And I'll go ahead and add in this number that I carried. Uh, 15 plus one is 16. The six drops down, the one carries. And again, I pass out the five. Five times six is 30 plus one is 31. And there's no place left to carry two, so the whole 31 will just come down. So that's 3,160. Again, notice the way that five passes out. So I wanna look at this problem, 679. Again, our parentheses means time. So 679 times eight, okay? So this looks a lot like the last problem I did. We're probably thinking, well, why is she doing one again? That's just like that. One of the biggest struggles that people have with multiplication is they forget their times tables. So I want to just show you what's one thing you could do if that was a struggle that you face. If I'm going to do this problem 679 times 8, it can be really intimidating to a lot of students because they feel comfortable with their lower times tables like 2s, 3s, or even 5s. But with their larger times tables like the 8s and the 9s, they get really lost. So what I would do if I wasn't feeling comfortable is I would build my eight times tables before I even begin. Remember, times multiplication is just repeated addition. So basically what I can do is I can add the number repeatedly down the side of my paper to build up my eight times tables. So that's what I'm gonna do. The first one is of course just eight. And I'm just gonna count by eights, which is the same as adding. So eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's the next one. That's two eights, or eight times two. 
I'm not going to keep going in that matter. So 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, to 1, to 2, to 3, 24. Or if you don't want to count up, you mess up with your fingers, you can just do the adding 8 each time. So 24 plus 8. 4 plus 8 gives 12. Carry that, that's 32. So the next one is 32. I like counting up though. So 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. And I want you to notice something here, guys. Notice eight is an even number. All these numbers are even. We've talked about this before. If you get any odd number in this list, you've gone astray, okay, guys? So 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64. I think you guys are bored of me counting already. 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72. And 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80. 80. 80 is 10 eighths. Notice it's just an eight with a zero on its butt. Okay, so that's 10 eighths, and I know that I have not gone astray here because I got from 8 to 80, and I do not need to go any further than that. Okay, great. So how does this help me? 8 is 8 times 1. 16 is 8 times 2. If I wanted to find 8 times 4, I'd go to the fourth row. 1, 2, 3, 4. 8 times 4 is 32. Okay, so what do I want? I want 8 times 4. 9. So I'm going to go to the ninth row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 8 times 9 is 72. 2 goes down, 7 gets carried. Now, I need 8 times 7. I'm going to go to the seventh row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's 56. Don't forget to add in the 7 I was carrying. 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63. Okay. 8 times 6 is, well, I don't know. Let's check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's 48. Add in the 6 that I had up there. 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54. Beautiful. And so my answer to that is 5,432. So was it slower to do it this way? Absolutely. Would I rather you had your times tables memorized? Yeah, for sure. But people tell me I can't memorize them, and I say, that's fine. You want to do it the long way? There's the long way. Okay, let's do a slightly harder problem. Uh, this time I'd ask, I'm asking you to find the product of 735 and 27. Why is this harder? Because I'm multiplying now by a two-digit number. Let's check it out. Now, when I multiply, I line up at the right. And it is proper to say at the right. Unlike with addition and subtraction, it is proper to say line up at the right. And we'll see that carried through later in math as well. I'm multiplying, there goes my times tables. So, once again, remember that when I multiply, multiplication passes out. I am going to start with this number down here with the rightmost number, the seven, and I am gonna work left. But, each number is going to pass out. So when I start with this seven, he's gonna end up multiplying three times. Seven times five, seven times three, and seven times seven. Let's go ahead and start that out. Seven times five is 35. Drop the five, raise the three. Seven times three is 21. Add that three in there and I have 24. The four comes down, the two goes up. Seven times seven is 49. Add the two, that gives me 51. Now, I'm not gonna stop to do it every time, but if you weren't sure that seven times seven is 49, you could prove it to yourself using your repeated addition. Okay. Now, what I really want to do with you is now look at what happens with the two. So, I'm all done with this seven. He got passed out to everybody. One trick I teach my students who get easily confused is to cross him out, I'm done with him. Another good idea is to cross out or erase the numbers that you carried. We won't be using them again. And sometimes they get in people's way and confuse them. Okay? So my job now is to pass out the 2, but something I want to point out about this 2 
This two is in the tens column, which means he's not really a two, he's really a 20. Because he's really a 20, I'm going to write all his answers down here. It's really important that I start this column with a zero to hold the, ten, the ones place steady. And I'm going to start my, num my uh, answers in the tens place. Okay? So here we go. I'm still going to pass them out to every number. 2 times 5 is 10. Drop a zero, carry a 1. 2 times 3 is 6. Add a 1 is 7. 2 times 7 is 14. There's no place to carry 2. So I just write the entire 14. Now, what do I do with these two numbers? I add them together. Everything I got from multiplying the 7 and everything I got from multiplying the 20 will now add together. So, let me write that. This is from the 1s and this is from the 10s. There we go. 5 plus 0 is 5. 4 plus 0 is 4. 1 plus 7 is 8. 5 plus 4 is 9. And nothing plus 1 is 1. So 19,845. Next problem is asking me to find the product of 632 and 285. So I'm going to go ahead and again in multiplication we do line up at the right. Okay. Uh, this problem is just like the last one. It's just now it's a three digit number. I wanted to give you a chance to practice. So once again I'm going to start by passing uh, the number that's in the ones column out to everybody on top. So 5 times 2 is 10. Drop the 0, carry the 1. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 1 is 16. 5 times 6 is 30, plus 1 gives me 31. No place to carry 2. Now I'm going to be kind to myself. I'm going to cross out this number because I'm done with him. I'm going to erase the numbers that I carried because I don't want to get them muddled into the next part of my problem. And now, I'm going to start passing out the 8. But again, guys, the 8 is in the tens column. And so I need to, before I even begin, make a 0 right there so that my numbers will start in the tens column. So 8 times 2 is 16. Carry a 1. See this passing I'm doing now? I just did 8 times 2. Now I'm going to do 8 times 3. 8 times 3 is 24, plus that 1 is 25. The 5 goes down, the 2 comes up. And finally, 8 goes to 6. 8 times 6 is 48. 49, 50. Great. Beautiful. I'm now done with the 8. I've passed him out to everybody. I'm going to erase this. Now, the 8 was in the tens place, we had said. But notice, the 2 is in what place? 1s, 10s, Hundreds. So that's really not two, that's two hundred. Well, how many zeros are there? If you think about the number 200, there's two of them. And so I'm going to plop down two zeros here. Okay? So I had one zero there, two zeros here. And now I'm going to start multiplying my two, and you'll see my answer will start right there in the hundreds column. So two times two is four. Two times three is six. 2 times 6 is 12. There wasn't even any carrying. I was kind to myself with that problem. And now I'm going to add together the answers I got from the number in the ones place, the answer I got from the number in the tens place, and the answer that I got from the number in the hundreds place. So, 0, 12, wait, 9, 10, 11, 9, 10, 7, 8, and 1. So what is that? 1, 2, 3, comma. That's 180,120. You knew this was coming? Here's your homework. So go ahead and go to www.quizlet.com. If you haven't already done it, done it, join my math class. And go ahead and do a search for this set, 1.5D, multi-digit multiplication. Make sure you practice it on learn mode, and then don't even skip the next lesson. I know you need practice with your division.
不离家。